So this week we're talking about the somatic nervous system. You already know what that means, um, the division that is the somatic nervous system. We'll do autonomic next week. So somatic means we'll be looking at the sensory input. Um, so different types of touch that we're conscious of as well as unconscious. So especially the um, internal interoceptors they're called that allow us to know where our body is in space, for example. So not all somatic nervous um, sensory are consciously um, perceived. We'll talk about sensation versus perception a little bit. So to actually perceive a sense, it has to be processed by the brain and specifically the frontal, um, the motor cortex. Um, I'm sorry, the primary sensory cortex. Let's just start over again. So this week we're talking about the somatic nervous system. You already know what that is. You know that it's different than the autonomic nervous system, which we'll talk about next week. So this week we will start with sensory, going through the different types of sensory receptors and um, stimuli that we can sense and how sensation is different than perception. So this then starts getting at central processing. So to have perception, you actually have to have a sense arrive in the um, primary sensory cortex or a primary cortex. So the, um, the cortex of the brain. Um, but other somatic processes, other senses, um, other stimuli can still be processed centrally, right? So by our central nervous system, even if we're not aware of them. So conscious um, processes, are not all that's important. And um, that should be apparent, right? With, with like a lot of what our body can do. So we'll talk about some central processing. So pathways, once we get to the spinal cord um, from a stimulus, having that um, information travel up into the brain. And then, then once um, we've done some integration, we're gonna have a motor output potentially. Um, so we'll also talk about motor responses this week. So kind of three main things, sensory perception, um, senses and perception, not always the same thing, um, integration in the central nervous system, and then motor responses. As, and then we'll kind of bring it all together and do some reflexes. Some of this isn't in your book, so I will um, provide one additional reading for the kind of the types of reflexes piece. Also note that the special senses that are part of the beginning of this chapter, I will wait and talk about in um, two weeks. So it's a whole separate section on the special senses. So um, like vision, taste, hearing, I actually won't talk about all of them, but um, smell, you don't need to focus on the details of those now. It is helpful to get an idea of different types of sensory receptors. Those special senses, I won't be talking about this week. One more um, thing I wanna do in this first video is remind you of where we are in how this fits in with this diagram I've shown before. So stimulus response pathway, that's what we're doing. We're doing a somatic, this week, somatic nervous system. Um, somatic, autonomic next week, stimulus response pathway. This is what we're doing. The most simple example of this is a monosynaptic reflex. That means um, a reflex where there's information coming in via a peripheral nerve that detected um, it's actually a stretch to the, the quadricep muscle. Um, there's one neuron. So let me actually draw this. Mm -hmm. Here is our, um, yeah, actually I will, that was the right spot. Our unipolar neuron synapses onto a motor neuron. That motor neuron 
synapses onto a skeletal muscle. This is detecting a hit for the knee-jerk reflex, which I'll use as an example. So this monosynaptic reflex is the simplest you can get, but this is a stimulus response pathway. Integration in the brain, I'm sorry, the spinal cord in this case is very, very simple. It's one synapse. Um, it gets more complicated than that. You've seen the brain anatomy, right? All those brain regions, all those nuclei, all do something. So we can have actual, um, and, and in fact, this reflex, you are aware of it. So there's, there's also information that travels up to the primary sensory cortex that tells you this happened. You, you feel that hit as well. And you are aware that you kicked your leg. Um, and you can stop that. Actually, you can stop that kick, but um, you shouldn't. And um, it happens even without you trying to. So various types of processing. We're not gonna go into a ton of detail. But we'll do a little bit of, especially motor control. Um, so with motor control, this is voluntary control over our skeletal muscles. We typically say that, again, knee-jerk reflex is an exception. Um, there's a lot of subconscious processing that goes on as well. So I'm gonna give you one little taste of that. You're gonna see this towards the end of the lectures this week. Um, so in order to have motor activity, we need to have a, a whole lot of, um, typically we're going to have a whole lot of processing to get there. So decisions being made, hey, I need to run away now um, or whatever. Lower motor neurons, this is going to mean we're ultimately gonna have a neuron in the um, ventral horn of the spinal cord that goes out to our skeletal muscle. So you know about that piece already and about the muscle. This is pathways that feed down to those neurons. There are what's called upper motor neurons as well. Um, primary motor cortex and premotor cortex are involved in your decisions to um, carry out motor tasks, but there's all this other pathway going on as well. So cerebellum is involved in, as you know, um, coordination and, and balance. That can also feed into the primary motor cortex to adjust movement. So all these other brain regions, we'll look at some of those pathways um, a bit as well. 